In today's video, we're going to be taking a close look at a late 1940s analog voltage and ohmmeter. This was given to a close friend of mine, and it's not too often that you come across 70-year-old test equipment like this. In previous videos, I showed you a mint condition, VTVM, or vacuum tube voltage meter that I bought at a Goodwill store. And I also gave you tours of an abandoned U.S. Navy base in the Caribbean that was built in the late 1950s. If you haven't seen those great videos, then be sure to click on the links posted at the end of this video. Okay, the first thing you see is that it comes in this very nice wooden case. This is something that you do not see anymore. Everything today comes in a plastic case or a canvas pouch. And right over here says Weston model 779 type 1A serial number 7610 and it's made in Newark, New Jersey. And you can see the nice handle on it. The bottom. Show you all the sides. All right, let's open this up and take a look and see what's inside. Okay, now on the cover is where the test probes would be stored under the strap. Unfortunately, this unit does not have the test probes included. And over here, you can see it says MHS, which is something high school. And it says physics department. So this was used in a high school somewhere. Now I did some research on this particular model and discovered it was made in the mid to late 1940s. In a minute, I'm going to show you, but there is a stamp on the inside. It says 1949 on it. But you can notice that this gauge, this analog gauge, is round and it's covering up the writing here. So this automatically told me that this was swapped out. And I also knew that because the name here, Bruno, did not match the name of the manufacturer for this unit. The one that was here before was rectangular. Went into these four screws, and it looks like what you see right over here. The knobs are chicken head knobs or crow knobs. They've got the curve on them. And everything seems to be very smooth operating. This is your zero adjust for ohms to bring it down to the line over there. Very smooth. And here's your resistance scale. R times 1 times 10 times 100 times 10,000. And down here is measuring DC milliamps up to 10, up to 50 milliamps, and up to a quarter of an amp, or 250 milliamps. Now on the other side, you have your DC voltage, up to 2.5, up to 10, up to 50, up to 250, and up to 1,000 volts. Measurements are made using this jack here, negative DC volts, milliamps, and ohms, and over here is DC volts, milliamps, ohms, positive, so everything would be measured off of these two. In a minute, I'm going to open this and show you there's nothing connected, no wiring to these three connections here, as well as this one there. Over here is for measuring AC volts. Now, I did try this out, and I can confirm it does not work. I tried testing different size batteries. I connected up my power supply unit to it, applying different voltage levels, and the meter did not move at all. I also tried measuring different resistors and there was no movement. And this is a very simple device, there's not much to it. Let me open this up so we can look at the inside. Screws I already loosened. Okay. See right there. So it operates using 1.5 volts at D-cell. So as I said earlier, there's nothing connected to this post, that post, or that post, or even the one over here. 
All right, there's nothing connected to that one. That's the 10 amp one. But there are wires connected to these posts here. This is the DC negative and positive at the bottom. And there's really not much to go wrong with this unit besides a faulty switch, and these are very well made. Could be poor contact, it could be a poor soldered connection on here, or this analog gauge could be faulty. Now right over here it says it's upside down, October 18th of 1957. So this was changed in 1957, and I'm going to show you right here in a second at the bottom of this box. You could probably see it right here, stamped 1949. So eight years after it was made, they swapped this out. And what I did after checking this whole thing over, I narrowed it down to the gauge being faulty. I desoldered the wire right here, then I applied very low voltage using my power supply unit, positive here, negative there, observed the needle, and there was no movement. I also applied a small level of current in series with an LED through here, and the needle did not move. So I'm very confident that this gauge is actually faulty again, and that's the reason why this unit does not work. Over here, all these are resistors. You see right here, it's a wire wound resistor. This is 800,000 ohms or 0.8M. And I think this was a 50K. You can see the potentiometer right here, multiple level switch. Over here is the other switch, changing between voltage and ohms. And that is it. There's not too much else inside this unit. Few resistors here. And I thought these were diodes, but I slid it over, and sure enough, it's a resistor. And it looks like this was modified over here. Somebody added these inductors, these little spools, look like a sewing bobbin. See, there's another one over here. I don't know if that was added later on, but it doesn't look original for some reason, but it could be. And that is it. I just figured you guys wanted to take a look at this. There's a stamp right there at the bottom. January 20th of 1949. So it should be correct based on when this model was produced. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed this brief video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.